children and young people have got very used to responding and behaving in certain ways. So typically what I've been hearing from young people is, you know, am I wearing a mask? Do I wear it all the time? guidance around school, you know, knowing that their friends might not feel similarly to them, you know, who's taking it seriously. And there's this overwhelming feeling, um, I think, in some young people when they're particularly anxious about whether or not they might um, spread, the, spread the virus, you know, whether or not um, relatives or other people in their family might be at danger because of things that they're not doing. Mm. There's some more research which came out yesterday, actually, um, when children were asked what their word of the year was for last year. They said anxiety. Their teachers mm -hmm. plump for resilience. I wonder whether they're sort of two sides of the same coin, that, that if children learn to manage their anxiety, that might make them more resilient. How can we help them to do that? I think it's a really helpful intervention to hear this, because actually, you're right, children are saying anxiety, feeling anxious is something that they've become much more in touch with. And yes, adults, people like me, are noticing just how resilient young people have been, how they've managed this. But I think the two things need to be really carefully managed with them to help them to be heard and acknowledge that they felt anxious, that they feel um, that anxiety, and to help them sort of self-identify how they've managed to come through the, the pandemic. Not all of this will be the same for some children. So, of course, you know, some children will be very, very anxious. And hearing that, you know, others think they're resilient is not going to be helpful. But I think helping children to understand something about their thoughts and their feelings, to notice when they're anxious, what they did, or when they're less anxious, will really help them notice something about, help them notice something about their own coping strategies, you know, exactly what their teachers are saying, that they have, in fact, become more resilient, more able, so that the next time they feel that they're facing something similar, hopefully not a pandemic, but, you know, they get that same sensation of feelings, they've got that information in their minds about, what did I do the last time I felt like this? Did I talk to adults? Did I talk to my parents? Did I talk to my friends? So those coping strategies, I think, are the things that we're talking about when we're saying they've become more resilient. So, Laverne, how can we notice that someone's struggling? And what are the immediate things we can do to help? I think parents need to really come alongside their children, do what teachers are saying, help them notice what they have done well, and create the space for them to say, actually, I'm really not doing that well today, and think about the plan. Services, we all know services are more limited than we'd want them to be, but there are ways in which we can be in touch with school. School can sort of slightly massage the way in which things or expectations are set if children are feeling like they're struggling. I think talking to your teachers, talking to friends, being back in school, I think for many professionals such as me has really been the, the sort of the touch paper for things feeling better because when children speak with their friends they get a general sense of where do I fit in how everybody's um, managing this so that's a really good place to start as well but certainly parents just leave that space open just ask them what they're thinking don't try and predict it check in with them good advice Laverne thanks so much for being with us thank you